Shalom. Today we're going to talk about a literary device which is called chiastic structure. It's not only used in the Bible, it is in the Old and New Testament, but it's used in a lot of other kinds of literature. It is named for the Greek letter, which is actually pronounced chi. You can say chi. It's not chi, it's not chai, it's not chi, it's chi. And you recognize it from the first letter of Christos, which means the same as Mashiach. It means in Hebrew, Christos is Greek. It means anointed. You may also have seen this symbol, which is called Hero, for the two letters. So they're the first two letters of Christos. There is an apocryphal story about Constantine having had a dream the night before a crucial battle, and he saw this sign and in the dream, he was told, under this sign, conquer, and he won the battle, and that's how he wound up becoming a Christian. However, uh, he didn't make up this idea, and the early believers didn't make up this idea from the name Christos. It actually predates the birth of Yeshua by a couple of hundred years. I guess it has a meaning, a short meaning for a word that means good. The he is an interesting letter in that it has what is called bilateral symmetry. Whether you split it in the middle from top to bottom, or you split it in the middle from side to side, you have a mirror image. The pattern makes a mirror image of itself either way that you split it. The concept of the chiastic structure is based on this left-hand arrow, and it also reflects a scripture from Isaiah 46.10, where God said he declares the end from the beginning. So we're going to see, as we work through what this literary figure looks like, that the themes of a passage will start at a, two diverse points, but which have the same theme, and then they come to meet in the middle. Just looking at that Isaiah 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Most of the time, when we get an instruction to leave a place, we are told not to leave the way we came. In other words, we should have had an encounter that changed us, and we leave in a different direction. But in two places, that is not true. In 1 Kings 19.15, Jehovah is talking to Elijah, and he says to him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. Go back the way you came. And then there's another example of this in Acts 111, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yeshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So sometimes a chiastic structure can be represented like this. You have an A theme, a B theme, a C theme. You can have a D or not. It doesn't have to have a middle. Then the theme that comes after the D is, a, is the same as the one that comes before the D. So we label them C and C1, B and B1, A and A1. So we're going to find out that these pieces of scripture have similar themes. Now, this can all take place even just within one verse. Personally, I've been having some heart issues lately, and I, I was reading this verse, and I said to myself, Aha! This verse represents a chiastic structure. Psalm 28, 7. Yehovah is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. If we break it up indenting it the way that we've been showing the chiastic structure, you see, Yehovah is my strength and my shield. Here's a new theme. My heart trusted in him. Here's the middle theme, the central theme. I am helped. The one that refers back to the previous. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. Both of those B themes are about my heart. And then finally, and with my song, I praise him relates to the song that I sing. The Lord is my strength and my shield. I praise him through that. Here's an example from a few verses that are together. And we see in the A verses, there is a theme of 
purging, of destruction, of good fruit and bad fruit. The first portion, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. This is similar to the last portion. His fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That which is not profitable will be burned up. The second theme. I baptize you with water unto repentance. The next to the last theme that, that relates to that. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Two different baptisms, but they're baptism. The middle verses. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He is so mighty that I am not worthy to carry his shoes. So you can see the formation there. This is one person's division of Psalm 23. We see that the author says that he shall not lack for anything. That corresponds to the last portion. He will have goodness and mercy. He will dwell in the house of the Lord where there is no lack. The second theme. We have themes of eating and of having enough water or liquid. He makes me to lie down. Oh, he prepares a table before me. The lying down specifically has to do with eating. We'll see that in a minute. And he's beside the still waters. Oh, and also his cup runs over. The third theme, he restores my soul. How? His rod and his staff comfort us. And that gives us a refreshment to our soul. The fourth theme about paths. He leads us in paths of righteousness. But also we walk through a path which is the valley of the shadow of death. And the person who divided this, not me, gives you a central theme. All of this, everything that he does, is for his name's sake. So that's the focus. It's the central theme. In Hebrew, it's not much different, but I just wanted to show you a few little interesting linguistic clues that you can see. In the second line, in the first portion, benot deshe yarbitseni. In a field, deshe, it's translated as green, but deshe is really grass. And it's not just any grass, rich fat grass. The verb yarbitseni is specifically related for the way animals lie down, tucking in their all fours underneath them, or it's also used for an animal that's ready to eat but he's going to pounce. Now I think we know that sheep do not pounce. The shepherd leads the sheep to rich green fat grass. Okay. So you can see in the next to the last line, uh, the second portion says, Dishanta Beshemen Roshi. This is translated as, he anoints my head with oil. So this is not the usual word for anoint. The usual word you know is mashach, like mashiach. But this Dishanta also has to do with the fatness. So they're not exactly the same root, but we can hear a uh, linguistic harmony between the desha of the fat grass and the desha of the anointing with oil. In the next portion, we have this phrase, yancheni b'ma'agale tzedek. He leads me in paths of righteousness. The verb to lead there is nacha, and it comes with a concept of reaching a goal and being satisfied. And you can see a little bit in there the name of Noach, which also has a meaning of comfort. And parallel to that, in the following verse, in the last portion, Shiftecha and Mishantecha Hema Yenachamuni, thy rod and thy staff, they. And so you have a root Nachem, which uh, we find in Isaiah, Nachamu Ami, comfort my people. This is bringing the comfort. We hear a phonological harmony between the nacha of the leading and the nachamu, the comforting. So sometimes, if you can read a little Hebrew, you can get a jump on how the chiastic structure is embedded into the scripture.
So this is a really, really brief overview. If you're interested in this further, I will refer you to Tony Robinson's web website, Restoration of Torah Ministries. He is very good at what he does in terms of chiastic structure, other teaching too, but in terms of chiastic structure, he has a real insight for it. If you go to his homepage, I think right now, there is a link to several YouTube video teaching that he has done showing how the whole book of Revelation is broken out in chiastic structure. And I would also recommend to you his teaching from the last portion of Genesis where he goes through the blessings that Jacob gives to his 12 sons and he breaks those blessings out as a unit and a brilliant chiastic structure. So that's if you're interested. I do want to say one more thing about this. and We've talked about this before. There is a code in the Hebrew writings, which is acknowledged by the early, early commentators. It's called Atbash. You see that written at the bottom, Atbash. And because Atbash is not a word, it's an acronym for the name of the code. And you can see where the name of it comes from. Because it's not a word, it's written with those it's written with those quote marks to tell you this is not a word. Don't try and understand it as a word. Either it's a number or it's an acronym. So the name of it comes from Aleph, the first letter, Tab, the last letter, Bet, the second letter, Shin, the next to the last letter, and so on. And it does appear in Tanakh. Here is a generally acknowledged example in Jeremiah 25, 26. It's talking about Melech Sheshach, or maybe you see Shishach, something like this. And he's the king of he's the king of Babylon. He is representing Babylon. So you can see by the chart, if you take the shin, then the substitution would be for bet. So you're gonna have two bets. If you take the kaf, the substitution will be Lamed. And so that changes the actual spelling, it inverts the spelling, to Bavel, which means Babylon. And there's a handful of examples like this in Tanakh. But if you talk to a rabbi about Atbash, they're going to tell you that it's a code for, for spelling things in a different way. So maybe to keep a secret or not to keep a secret. The reason that I bring this up is because very recently I have heard one current traditional rabbi commentator on YouTube who has called chiastic structure atbash. I had never heard it except maybe in the past year or two or three. And it's you can see that it's actually not a bad name for it as the letters progress inward towards each other, towards the middle. But as I said, he's the only person that I've ever heard use that term. So you might hear it, but most, most of the time, if people are talking about Atbash, they're talking about a code. They're not talking about chiastic structure. I hope this is helpful to you in your studies. Till next time, Tasimit HaInayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.